Now I'll go through everything that you'll need materials and equipment wise for felt making basically everything you're going to need for this tutorial. If you've got one of my kits from my Etsy shop I'm going to open it up and go through the contents of it briefly uh, to check that you've got everything that you need and to help you understand what each of the parts is for. If you're using your own bits and pieces from home then still watch you'll need to find all these bits and pieces at home too. Opening my kit up and the first thing is the bamboo mats which is probably the most important thing in the whole kit. Uh, these mats I've used different mats over the years is they tend to break really really easily you can generally get them as uh, bamboo placemats dinner mats and they're, they're not very well the cheaper ones aren't very well strung together you can spend more money and get the same bamboo mat that's probably called a felting mat but they're not necessarily any better try and get one if you can see see the string the threads the stitching on this mat it's triple stitched which just makes it last a bit longer and if you are going to invest in one I'd say get a pack get a pack of four because when they do break and you're in the middle of felting it's very frustrating so it's always good to have another one to hand. I sell these individually on my Etsy. The next thing that I'm pulling out of my box is the printout of the 16 steps. Also included in my kit is two pieces of thin plastic. They measure 45 by 30 centimetres roughly and you will need two pieces. The reason being my method of felting involves using two sheets of plastic on the, underneath and on the top to sandwich the fibres and that allows you to manipulate the fibres and flip them over, turn them in different directions as you're working. Thin uh, plastic like this which is actually a dust sheet used for decorating is great and it, it doesn't cost very much for quite a large quantity. You can cut it down to the exact size that you need. If you don't have any of this to hand and you can't get out to get any and you haven't got one of my kits where it's included, don't worry, just cut up an old plastic bag, make cut it up so that it's flat and then you can cut out the size that you need which in, for this tutorial is going to be 30 centimetres by 45 centimetres and you'll need two sheets. Next I'll go through all the wools that are included in my kit. The first wool is the ball of white merino wool and you've got about 15 grams of it here. As a beginner we always recommend that you use merino wool, it just felt so easily and it produces a felt that's super soft, super luxurious. If you're going to produce something 3D or something like a rug or or a bag, something that's perhaps going to be worn or, or needs to hold its shape. You would use a coarser fibre, maybe a, a fibre that's come from an animal that's in a, a colder climate so that fibre has had to keep the animal a lot warmer and it's therefore a lot coarser, a lot thicker. You can always blend the coarser fibres with the finer fibres like this merino to have the benefit of both worlds. In my tutorial when we produce the abstract flowers piece of felt work you'll be using the majority of that white merino wool don't worry if you don't use it all I have given you a bit extra but you shouldn't run out the next item I'm looking at in my box is the gorgeous blend of merino wool colors three or four colors blended with silk and it's the only one in my kit box which is blended we're going to be using this when we do the practice exercise that's when we produce the little square like this next thing out of my box is the gorgeous colors of merino wool and you should have a mixture of blues, greens, some pinks, some grapefruits. Again, I've given you slightly more than you need for this tutorial, so if you've got some left over at the end, you can use it to produce something else. The last few things in my kit are the recycled sari yarn. You should have a white and another another colour. You should have a little packet of mulberry silk in two to three colours. And lastly, in my kit, another envelope, if you open it up, you should have quite a few meters of different widths of mohair with silk boucle yarns. That's everything from my kit but there are some other bits and pieces that you'll need to provide from home. A flat surface. When you are felt in this needs to be a completely flat surface. It's not going to work if your table has got ridges in it, bumps in it, dints in it, an old piece of wood that's uneven. Not going to work. A kitchen worktop is the best place. I very often felt at my kitchen workbench because it's a nice height for me to stand up. If you felt in a lot it will put a bit of strain on on your shoulders and your neck. So I like to stand up at my kitchen worktop near my sink and sort of lower my hips and just sit in a comfortable position for me. You can felt sat down, absolutely, sit down at a table. Just make sure that the table isn't made of a material that you would be worried if it gets damp. If so, you can always put a, a big sheet of vinyl or plastic down to protect it. If you've not got access to a sink, perhaps you're felting in a different room, in your dining room or a spare room or craft room, and you've not got ready access instantly to a sink, it might be a good idea to have 
um, a, a bowl or a jug, an old washing up bowl, something like this, a container, right next to where you're working. When you come to blotting the work down and taking some of the water away, it's really handy to wring out that towel or that flannel, whatever it is you're using, directly into this bowl uh, and it stops you having to, to keep back and forth to the sink all the time. And so a bit more now about blotting. You will be blotting your work. The idea is that you fill up all the fibres with water and then you draw the water back out again. And you'll do this many times throughout the felt making. Fill with water, draw the water away. I find it handy to have an old tea towel or hand towel, even a couple actually, because it's good to have one that's completely dry towards the end, which helps you dry your felt out. So I have a couple of those to hand ready. They don't have to be old, don't worry, they won't get dirty, they're only going to get damp. So you could just use a regular bathroom hand towel that you've got and just chuck it in the wash afterwards. Another thing I've found really handy over the years is old face flannels. Again, they don't have to be old, they can just be out of your bathroom and chuck them in the wash afterwards. These are just much smaller uh, and they're, they're so handy to block down your work and just wring out and then as soon as they get saturated just chuck them to one side and just pick up a, a new dry clean flannel. Something else important is a water bottle. You're going to need a means of transferring water onto your work a bit like a sprinkler and you can buy out their felting tools that are a bit like they look a bit like a turkey baster or I think they're actually often sold as bonsai tree watering sprinklers something like that but they can be sort of 10 15 pounds i just use an old water bottle and i have just knocked a nail with an old piece of wood and a hammer through the the, the lid and that just allows me to sprinkle water on it doesn't matter what size it can be a large one a small one you're just going to need that to hand if you haven't got that don't worry you're just going to be transferring water onto your felt during the process i suggest if you've got your bowl next to you dip your hands in and you can just sprinkle with your fingers directly onto your laid down fibres. Alternatively, if you're finding that tricky, I know it can be a bit tricky, use sponge, dip into the water and just gently squeeze the water out, sprinkling on the surface of your work as you go. Scissors, a piece of A4 paper. We're going to be using this as a template, so we're going to fold it in half. Soap. Lots of felt makers will use olive soap and you can get this from a health food shop or maybe online somewhere, I think Holland and Barrett sell this. They sell it in really large cubes like this one here. What I'll say is it's, it's not a very nice experience to felt with fairy liquid or any kind of antibacterial soap, so they're an absolute no-no. This would be the other end of the spectrum, this is kind of the perfect soap to felt with because it's olive soap, it's got such a high moisture content, it's gentle on your hands, it's gentle on the fibres. Lots of felt makers will um, either use it as a, as a small block in their hands and just rub it in the hands, rub it over the surface of the felt or they'll use a cheese grater, something like that, carve it up into flakes and then add water to it so that it's breaking it down into an olive soap solution. That's fine too, however I have also found that that's an extra step that's a bit too complicated for me. It's not for me, I'm all about the simplicity and I tend to like using some kind of gentle household hand soap. It works absolutely fine and if you're finding it's too concentrated and it's making your work too soapy, decant half of it out of the container and mix it in with half water, half soap and you'll probably find that that works just as, just as well. So that's everything, that's everything you're going to need in terms of materials and equipment. Have all this to hand, have it all ready, get yourself a cup of tea and enjoy this tutorial.